just for you guys to know, you know, these last few weeks, my heart has been heavy with everything that is going on in our nation. And I really believe that this is a special time that we're living in our nation. I really don't believe that anything happens by coincidence. I really believe that God does everything with a plan and with a purpose. And I really believe that He is calling His church to be an answer to everything that is going on right now. By now, everybody in this room and everybody watching online is familiar with the name George Floyd. Oh, that name. I really believe that that name, what it's done is that it's opened a door to deal with some wounds of the past that many have not wanted to dealt with, that many have buried underneath. And a lot of us might come to church and say, Pastor, we're going to talk about that. Well, the reality is, is that I think that here's where we need to have those conversations. I really believe that if we're going to have those conversations, those conversations should not happen in the courthouse. Those conversations should not happen in the White House. Those conversations should happen in the church house because only the Holy Spirit could change the hearts of men. Nobody else could do it. Only God could change and bring down the divides and bring down the barriers. And only God could create bridges where there's division. So definitely, it's in the house of God that we need to have these conversations. And I really believe that for a long time, the church has been silent on very important issues like the one that we're dealing with today, like the race issue that we're dealing with today. So I have a title for my message today, and I'm going to encourage you that you're watching right now to write this down, right? And you guys that are, watching, that are here with me, write it down. The title of today's message is A Conversation on Righteousness and Justice. A Conversation on Justice, on Righteousness and Justice. And I want you guys to go with me in your Bibles to Psalm 89. And I'm just going to give an introduction. And in a moment, we're going to jump into something real good here. But Psalm 89, verse 11 through 14. I'm going to read now from the New Living Translation in English. And it says this, The heavens are yours, and the earth is yours. Everything in the world is yours. You created it all. You created the north and the south, Mount Tabor and Mount Hermon, which are two mountains in the nation of Israel. Praise your name. Powerful is your arm. Strong is your hand. Your right hand is lifted high in glorious strength. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Unfailing love and truth walk before you as attendants. What a beautiful scripture. Now I want to ask you right there where you're at, if you could bow your heads for a second. We want to ask the Holy Spirit to prepare our hearts for this conversation that we're going to have today on righteousness and justice. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We bless you. We declare that there's no God like you in all the heavens and the earth. And today, as a church here at Numa, Lord, all the family that has gathered through the World Wide Web, whether they're connected through Facebook, they're watching this on a YouTube recording, whether they're connected through the link live on our webpage, we declare, my God, that you are moving upon our hearts and that we would bring together that message of righteousness and justice and that it could be one in our hearts. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. And we say amen and amen. Before I call the panel to come up here, and we're going to be sharing a little bit with you guys today of some of the things and how we've seen it. Like I said, these two words, can you repeat this word with me? Righteousness. Can you repeat that word with me? Righteousness. And the other word is justice. Can you repeat that word with me? Justice. Righteousness and justice. You see, one of the phrases that one of my good friends, Sam Rodriguez, likes to say is that we need the righteousness and the justice. The cross is both vertical and horizontal. And it's the message of Dr. Billy Graham, which is 
vertical, and then the horizontal message of Dr. Martin Luther King, and they go hand in hand. You can't separate one from the other. They got to go together. They got to work together. And today, my heart is saddened with everything that is going on in our nation because like I said, I really believe that there's a wound that's been opened and it's fresh and people are hurting and that's why you have all these people that are coming out demonstrating what they have inside. Now, there's peaceful marches that have been going on and I love that. I love that people will go out and voice what they stand for. Now, there's been some craziness that's been going on as well. And people that have taken advantage of what's going on to loot and, and steal and all these things. And I want to tell you guys something. And I want you guys to understand that whenever you see destruction, whenever you see uh, killing, whenever you see stealing, that does not come from God because Jesus said the enemy came to kill, steal, and destroy. So we know that the enemy is trying to take advantage of what God is trying to do in this nation. And we need to have our eyes open. Like this policeman that got killed the other day in the middle of, of that looting and it breaks my heart. He was a man of color, a captain named David Dorn and, and, and he was killed viciously. And we don't stand for police brutality, but you know what? We honor life. It doesn't go either way. Everybody should honor life, should honor color, should honor people. And you're like, Pastor, you're a little bit passionate about this. I am. Because I really believe that God is passionate about this. And I really believe God wants to say something. I believe it's a, a moment for an exclamation mark. Not just a period, not just a comma. No, an exclamation mark moment for the church. And the same way that there's been different movements in the church throughout the years, there was the revival movements of the 17 and 1800s. There was a Pentecostal movement at the beginning of the 1900s. There was a whole prophetic and apostolic movement. I really believe that this is a movement of the Holy Spirit where He wants to deal with every racial divide and bring it down and make us be one in Jesus' name. So we ask the church of Jesus Christ to rise up because we've been called for such a time as this. So we're going to speak a little bit up here today about righteousness, about justice, but from a platform of truth and love at the same time. And I have a panel that is going to come up here with me and I want to call that panel that is going to be part of our conversation today. If you guys could come up, I have... Esperanza Martinez, Pastor Espy, if you could come up. I have Shauna Paris Payne, one of our teachers at Numa Christian Academy. I have my good friend Victor from an Asian background. He's going to come up here and we're going to have a great old talk this morning. Thank you, Alain, for helping me. And you guys could just come up here, pick a seat. Now I'm just going to sit right here. All right, I hope all you guys online can see what's going on here today. And all you guys here can be part of what's going on. All right, they're fixing me up, all right? I want to make sure that I, there you go. All right. So guys, thank you so much for being part of this panel. But more importantly than the panel, being part of this conversation. I really believe that, like I said, God is calling us for such a time as this. And that's why we're sitting here. And we're praying that there will be hearts that are touched by the message that we're going to share today. So I have some questions that we're going to go into this morning. And I'm going to start with Pastor Espy. Pastor Espy, I want to ask you that when you've looked at everything that has transpired in our country these last two weeks, what comes to your mind? Heartbreak. Um, I, I think that what, um, what happened with... Um, Dr. Mr. George Floyd was, was something that broke something in my heart that it needed to be broken. I think that for me personally, it, it shifted my attention to look in deeper. But I also understand that I believe that the Lord is, is using this situation. He will turn what was meant for evil into good. And what he's doing is shaking the foundation of the body of Christ, the church so that we understand that there are some things that we as a church have permitted through our silence, through ignoring and thinking, it's not me, it's not my issue, I don't feel that way, I'm not uh, racist or prejudiced or I don't discriminate, but yet we stand silent. 
So I, I truly do believe that the Lord is calling us to, as you were saying, Pastor, righteousness and justice. And who better than the body of Christ yeah. to speak on that with a prophetic voice because we know true righteousness is in Jesus Christ. He is the answer for everything. But Jesus is not passive and he was definitely not quiet. So that when we discuss this issue as men and women of God who follow him, who profess him, then I think that we need to be stand up in that. And I, I pastor was asking us this morning uh, well, how we were feeling. And one of my prayers uh, recently is that I will not sin in my anger because there was an anger in me. And I realized that I needed to make sure that I didn't fall into sin with that. Very good. How about you, Shana? How have you looked into these things that have happened these last two weeks? What comes to your mind, your heart? So what comes to mind is that nothing has really changed. Um, I start thinking of stories such as um, Emmett Till in 1955, a 14-year-old who was accused of flirting with a white woman, and he was killed very brutally. And that same brutality that I see in that story is the same brutality I'm seeing today. So when I look at um, black lives being taken, I just think to myself, yeah, not much has changed because it's repeating itself. We're still fighting the same fight to be valued, to be respected. Um, yeah, here, it's the same thing. Mm. So, How about you, Victor? You uh, have uh, an Asian background. You grew up in Venezuela. And now you live in the United States, so there's a little bit of a mix in you. How have you been processing? What have you been thinking about as you see all these things? Well, after the, the death of George Floyd, I, I've seen so much hatred, so much division, and sadness, and suffering, and pain. And at the same time, I've seen a lot of passion, a lot of desire, a lot of hope, and awakening, and, and, and a move for change. And I think that's a positive direction. I, for one, have experienced racism um, in, in, every, in, in every season, in every period of my life, whether it be racial slurs or, or just the, the judgmental eyes that, that were on me based on, that, that were judging me for, uh, for the color of my skin or for my background or for, for just my name, you know, simple stuff. And, I can empathize with those who are protesting uh, for, for their, their rights, protesting for, uh, against unfairness, protesting against uh, unrighteousness. And I applaud those people who are protesting in their own little ways, whether it be going out in the streets, uh, voicing their opinions, or uh, educating themselves or their family or their friends or also just uh, and and I think that um, we're all different in our design in our purpose and even our background but we're all made in the image of God and because we're made in the image and likeness of God we have the capacity to love one another we have the capacity to understand each other. We have the capacity to stand up for each other and be able to fight along, fight along uh, with each other and comfort each other in this time of need and in this time where this country is starving for God. Mm. Very good, very wise words for a young man, man, to share that. SP, none of this has caught God by surprise. God knows all things. He's still on his throne and he has not moved one inch. How do you think he's looking down at all this? Wow, I, uh, you know, I, I think that, um, as you said, it hasn't caught him by surprise. I think that um, he's still sitting on the throne. He's still God and he's still good. And his best plans, we were singing I, 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 the, about the victory that we rest upon our, on mm. our present circumstances because our victory is secure. We know the results. We know the end of this story. But yet he wants to be with us. I believe that Jesus is being manifested with us in the present so, like, so that the pain that 
you know, it pains my heart to hear Victor discuss that. He said throughout his entire life, throughout his entire life, he has been discriminated against. That is deeply sad. And I believe that that deeply saddens the Spirit of God. I also believe that the Spirit of God is empowering and lifting up young people like Sean and, 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 and Victor and many others who are now deciding, who are standing up and not in a self-righteousness, but seeking to lead people to Christ. So I, I, I see that the Lord is with us. He has not forgotten us. He stands here and he says, I will go with you. And um, he has already won, but we need to walk in that. We need to walk in that. We need to walk in what the Lord is doing. Whew. I want to ask you, Victor, what do you think is the cure for what's happening in America today? Well, it does. It's going to sound cliche, but the answer is Jesus. Um, because there's nobody else. And, and like you said it before, there's no... Who can change and heal the hearts of man besides God? And... Yes, there's a lot of change. There's a lot of there's a movement for uh, governmental change and, and, and policies, and also being able to uh, the, the people trying to get rid of the systemic racism. There's a lot of uh, poli police brutality policies that are changing. There's a move for change. There is, and, and it's a massive one. It's like the largest uh, civil rights movement. It recorded in history with 50 states of, the, of America and 18 different countries joining to protest against this. It is amazing. It's amazing. But ultimately, there's, uh, uh, there's something more than just racism. And I think there's a, there's a, uh, um, there's a heart issue in each and every one of us. And it's not being able to look at the other not, not as equal or less, but with a, with a God-given value. And when we can't do that, when, when we don't do that, we ultimately make them inferior or we idolize them. It's either or. And I think that that's where Jesus comes in. And we have to put God in, in our families. And, and it starts in the family because who teaches us all of this? We don't, we're not inherently racist. We're not born racist. Mm. And through our family, I think that we made the mistake that, because in my family, I, I gotta be honest, Asians are really racist too, even to the black, black community. And, I, I, and I've, I hear a lot of that. And, uh, but something in me changed when, when I came to the Lord and, and I, I really look at people with no, no difference, in, not, not by the color or not by, not by anything that, that might uh, distinguish them, you know. And we just really need to speak up in, in our family, in our house, and, and be able to voice our opinions in, in the conversation, daily conversations that we make because a lot of people are not educated and, or, don't ha or don't have the opportunity to be educated. So if you're watching there online, Victor just says something very powerful. You're not born racist, but the answer is Jesus, okay? The answer to this situation is only found on Jesus Christ. So my encouragement to you as a pastor is I don't know where you stand in this whole thing, and I don't even know if you're having issues in your heart right now, but one thing I do ask you to cling on to Jesus, and today, you know, put yourself at the feet of the cross and if you feel that there's any prejudice if you feel that there's any hate if you feel that there's anything in your heart that is not right just say jesus please work in my heart work in me take it away from me the same way that you might be struggling with sexual sin or you might be struggling with gambling or you might be struggling with something else the same way this is also a sin and the only way that it could be taken away is by jesus working in our hearts and in our lives uh, Shana, I want to ask you a question. Um, you were at the march last week. You were out there again yesterday, the peaceful march. And uh, 
why did you feel that you needed to be there? And how did it feel being there, not only as a person of color, but as a representative of Jesus Christ and of the church? So I decided to protest and to march yesterday because being black is not a crime, yet it is treated as it is a crime. So um, Tamir Rice, Sandra Bland, Trayvon Martin, um, Brianna Taylor, Ahmaud Aubrey, George Floyd, they did not die, they weren't killed for any crime committed. They were killed because of their existence, because they are black. Um, which is sad because you look at Brianna Taylor's story, the cops come in to check, they have a no-knock warrant, so they just come in, um, and she shot eight times. Mm. None of the cops are charged, but her life is gone. You have Ahmad Aubrey chased down, hunted down like an animal, um, and a modern day lynching. You have George Floyd, and we see, we have seen the videos. You see the knee in his neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds, and him asking and saying, I can't breathe, and him calling on his mom. Yeah, and I see all these things, and I'm saying to myself, no more. I am going to stand up. I'm not just going to stand. I'm going to stand united with others and protest and demand justice. And that's what I did. Um, you look in Genesis, and you see, like Victor said, when God made us, mankind, in his image and in his likeness, he did not put a race superior to another because he made the human race. Come on. But then you have the fall of man. You have sin now coming into play. And with that, one of the results are people adopting a racist ideology, believing that one race is superior to another. And we know that is wrong. Racism is wrong. Prejudice mentality is wrong. Yeah, discrimination is wrong. And I decided to stand united with those people who have seen and who have acknowledged the sickness in this um, nation. And we walked together, we marched together. Yesterday, we prayed together. And we demanded justice because in Amos 5, Jesus, he is calling out and warning the coming judgment, and he's calling out the hypocrisy of his people, and he's saying, I don't want your burnt offerings. I don't want the peace offerings. Yeah. I want to see a mighty flood of justice, an endless river of righteousness. So knowing the heart of God and knowing that I'm a part of the body of Christ, and knowing that I desire to please him with whatever I do, what I say, I know that I have a responsibility to seek justice. Yeah, because my God, he's a just God. So I did protest yesterday, um, and I felt honored to be a representative of Christ, because I believe that's what Christ would have done. If one part of the body is sick, if one part of the body is in need, then we're all in need. We should not feel settled because there's a need that we need to meet. So that's why I went. Mm. So good, so good. SP, I want to go to you. What's in your heart when you see the manifestations, but not the peaceful ones, the rioting and the looting and the breaking into stores? And, you know, I, I saw this video that, that it broke my heart, and, and it was a... Uh, you know, as an African-American older man, and he's chasing these looters down the street, and he's saying, you don't know what it costs me to build this business, but you come in here and destroy that. And he's, you could see the pain and, and, and the anger and everything. What do you think when you see that? Jesus in Matthew 5 says that um, we have been told, or he's saying, you've been told by our ancestors, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And he's saying, but that is not the way with you. Mm. And so when, that's the way of the world. But, but I've taken the time to listen and understand where, where does this deep anger is coming from these individuals. The, and I'm not saying that what they did was right. I mean, rioting and looting and stealing, those things aren't right. And yet there's a part of me that can go back and understand the reason why there's so much anger and bitterness. 
they have their humanity being trampled on over and over and over again. So I think that the part of me, there is a sense of, you know, Jesus would confront people with sins. Like, you know, the woman who uh, was uh, a, a prostitute, she, she would say, you know, no one condemns you, neither do I. Go sin no more. There has to be an end to sin because that kind of behavior is sinful. But yet there has to be compassion. I think that we need to create ways so that black, the black community that has been damaged for years and years and have carried an internalized message of hatred uh, and anger and, and even self-hatred can come and heal. Mm. It's called post-traumatic stress. So that, so that to me, it's, I, yes, it's wrong. And yet I still think that we as a church can come and embrace individuals who are in pain and love them because that's what we have. When we have love, I mean, think about the fact that, you know, when I came to Christ, I was full, filled with pain and anger. I was an activist. I fought for women's rights and I did all kinds of crazy things that, you know, most people don't even know anymore about me, but that's who I was. I was a very angry woman and it was through the love of Jesus Christ who taught me my rightful place as his daughter, my identity firmly planted in him, where I could begin to look at my perceived enemy and understand that that person was broken like me, except that now I have been gifted, the, given the gift of life and the fire of the Holy Spirit within me. So instead of getting angry at people who are angry, I think, I think that we need to feel compassion. And that's where that issue of justice and righteousness come. Because if we were judged by our behavior, by God, with anger, poof, we'd be gone. Yeah. But he delivers compassion. So to me, that's what I feel. That's what I, I sense. Ooh, so good. So good. So good. Victor, I want to go to you because you mentioned that Jesus was the answer for the problem in America. When you look at Jesus and the way that he would treat those that were less than, if I could put that, uh, you know, in semicolon, you know, what impacts you the most? Um... All I can think of, of that is uh, the stories in the Bible of how Jesus, like, uh, he leaves the 99 and chases after the one. He goes out of his way and, and heals uh, the, the man with leprosy. He, he goes and, 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 and just, he has a heart for those who are less than, for those who are labeled as outcasts, for those who are labeled as weak or inferior or anything that, that might be negative about it. And all those labels just come down with Jesus chases after us. I think of the story of the prodigal son who lost everything, all his titles, all his status, everything. But when he came back home, the father immediately embraced him, immediately uh, gave him back his title, gave him back clothes, food, everything that's there to be. And that speaks a lot about what uh, those stories speak so much about what Jesus has for us, for those who are labeled as less than. And it basically tells me that, man, I am worth fighting for. Or, or those people who are, who are viewed as less than, they're worth fighting for. They're worth pursuing. They're worth uh, his time. They're worth, and, and ultimately, we're worth dying for, you know. And I think that God really has a heart for us, for hmm. those who are viewed as less than. And he has so much space in his heart for, for all of us. Yeah, you know that as, as he's saying that, I have so many stories of the gospel that come to my mind. Like, I have the story of Jesus sitting down at the well, talking to a Samaritan woman. And that woman was not used to men talking to her except for looking for something else. And even less, a Jew talking to a Samaritan. That she even brings it up in the conversation. She goes, listen, you're a Jew, I'm a Samaritan, and I'm a woman, what are you doing talking to me? And he goes, if you would know the gift of God. Whew. 
Church, if we would know the gift of God, if we would know who Jesus is, these kind of things, what they tell me, is that we really don't know the gift of God. We really don't know who Jesus is and what he stands for. Because you see, all the people that gave him a hard time for talking to the tax collectors, to the prostitutes, to the sinners, were all the righteous people. And Jesus told them something. He goes, but I did not come for the righteous. If you think that you're healed and you are not sick, then you have nothing to do with me. Because it's the sick that I came for. You see, he came for the less. He came for the lost. And that, like you said, Espy, that was you, that was me. That's been each of us in moments of our life. If not, we wouldn't be here sitting in this place. He came, and like you said, Victor, he gave his life on a cross. He died because the Father knew that there was value in us. He didn't die to give us value. He died because we were valuable to him. And it didn't matter, you know, if you were, you know, Asian or Hispanic or black or white, whatever. No, it didn't matter. He just saw somebody that was made in the image and the likeness of God and that was worth dying for. That was worth dying for. Sean, I want to go to you as we bring this home because we need to bring this home. We need to bring this to, to action. We need to bring this to practice. This that Victor just said and that I'm talking about, how, how would you see this being manifested through the church today in our time? Jesus through the church, the, the word made flesh through the church. How would you see that? Okay, well, first, there are like five things I think of. First, for the non-black believers, you have to be slow to speak and quick to listen to the black community. Um, it's time to learn um, and just time to listen. Listen to their experiences here in America and acknowledge and see their hurt and their pain um, and don't try to tell them how to feel about it but be there to listen um, and then i also believe like victor mentioned as well educating we have to educate ourselves be aware of historical events that occurred be aware of the relationship the toxic relationship with america and the and black people um, so read read books there's documentaries um, stay in the Word of God. All the answers are in there. And, yeah, for sure, educate yourself because in Hosea um, 4, God says, my people are destroyed because of their lack of knowledge. Mm. So let's become more knowledgeable about history so we understand what is happening, what we see today, and try to... Under like, you're not going to understand. If you're not black, you're not really going to understand my experience in its totality, but you can still empathize and have compassion um, for what's happening with the black community. Um, thirdly, I would say to reach out. No, that's not my third one. After you educate yourself, since you are aware of things now, I say it's time to search your heart, examine yourself, ask God to reveal things that might be in your heart that's not of him, and repent from it. So some things you might not even be aware of when we get to like racial um, biases, some things are implicit and you might not know that this is what you think of a certain group of people, but that's why I'm saying bring God into it so he can bring out everything that's not of him that's in your heart. So repent and then after that, educate yourself some more, start educating those around you, spread it in your home, spread it to your friends, and then after that, I believe you need to reach out. Reach out to the black community. You have a black friend, reach out to them. There's something known as um, racial battle fatigue. And that's basically the strain, emotional strain, physical strain, emotional strain that people experience when they have to continually undergo and experience racism, discrimination, um, prejudice, all of that. So really reach out to your black Friends, they're trying to stay strong, but this is very difficult. Um, and then after that, I would say collaboration with the churches. So in my, I envision churches from around the city coming together, 
um, the leaders getting together, pastors getting together, and really planning on how we are going to represent the Capital C Church and stand for justice all together. Like individual churches just coming together as one body of Christ. Um, because I went, and then let me clarify, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to compare the protests I went to a week ago versus the march yesterday. But when I went to the protests last week, which was not organized by a Christian organization, many, many people came out and we marched together. Yesterday I went out, the church was still represented and I was thrilled. Like my experience there was encouraging, powerful, all of the above. But from the amount of people there, I could still see that there's great division within the church. Mm. So it's very important for the leaders to come together and stand together and let them let the congregation know, let the world know this is where we stand and this is why we stand for justice. And then after that, after the cities come together, then that can expand outwardly, like state to state and keep going. So it's a world change, you know what I mean? Like that's what we need and that's what I see in vision. That's that's so good, you know, that's so good and uh, you know that and well you're a teacher so i'm going to go into your field a second you prepare your students and then you want to know how much they learn so you present them a test and that test will let you know if they've captured right what you've been teaching them i think god has been preparing the church for a test all this time but i don't really know if we've been studying the way that we need to study and get ready the way that we need to get ready because when she says that she goes out there and, you know, we can't stand on an issue because we're divided. I'm like, how are we going to stand for the social issue of race if the church is still divided on so many things? And the church is standing here on one side, you know, I speak in tongues, I don't believe in speaking in tongues, well, I don't believe in laying on hand, and I don't believe in this, and I don't believe in that. And you know what? I think Jesus is coming for a mature church. Jesus is coming for a church that already put all that stuff behind it and that knows how, how to stand in front of the world because if we can't deal with our stuff in here, how are we going to go out there and represent Him correctly? So we need to put some stuff to the side and say, hey, it's time to grow up, it's time to mature. You know, and today I'm bringing this topic, I'm so glad I'm bringing this topic today and I sort of touched on it last week on Pentecost Sunday, sharing from my heart, but today, you know, being phase one of having our dream team here, I couldn't think of a better Sunday to come and have the dream team here and have you guys that are watching online participating of this talk than today. Because you know what, like I said, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. We've been hearing that for 2,000 years. But Jesus is expecting for his church to represent him here on earth also. I'm going to ask the worship team to start coming up. SP, I'm going to go to you uh, as, as we bring this to, to a close today. Is this a race issue or is this something deeper that's going on? Racism is sin. So this is a sin issue. Shana said that in Genesis, we have all been created in the likeness and image of God. So that when we look at another human being as less than myself, I am denying that person's divine imprint. And when we do that, we reject the creator. And when we reject the creator, we, we reject him. So that is sin. It is deep embedded with us. Cain and Abel. Cain kills Abel. Jesus asks, where is your brother? And he says, am I my brother's keeper? And the answer is, yes, you are. Yes, we are. We are our brother's keeper. So that when one body, we cry with those who cry, we mourn with those who mourn, who mourn, we are one body. And, and so it's a sin issue. And as, as you guys, as, as uh, Shana was saying, in, I'm sorry, Pastor Chris, you were saying that we get so preoccupied with all our religious decorations Mm. And then Isaiah 58, he, God says, is this not the, the fast that I am requiring? He's challenging religious thought and doing. And he said it is to break the yoke of the oppressed. It is to feed the poor. There is an action involved. It's not about, you know, whether some people prophesy or the other people don't. It's about the fact that we have gone so far away from the commandment that God says that wraps it all, to love God with all our heart, mind, and soul, mm. and to love others as ourselves.
So racism is a sin issue, it's a spiritual issue that we need to combat also in the spirit. I think that we need to pray, right Shauna? We need to pray, but we also need to do. It cannot just stay in the prayer closet. The prayer closet is a preparation so that when we go out, we do what God is asking us to do. Mm, so good, so good. And that's what we're going to do this morning. You see, this is a prophetic platform that the Holy Spirit has been setting up for us today. And right there where you are in your home, I really believe that God is speaking to your heart the same way that he's speaking to us over here. Because I can really feel the presence of the Holy Spirit upon my heart, even as we have this conversation. And, and before we get into this moment where we're going to all pray together, I want you to come with me to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3. And I know that we're going a little bit over on this, but we needed to have this conversation. You know, we needed to keep everything nice and within the borders. We'll never talk about this, but we need to talk about it. Galatians 3 verse 27 and... 28 and as you guys look for that scripture it, it, this burns in my heart it says this it says and all those who have been united with Christ in baptism how many of us have been united with Christ in baptism all of us if you've received Jesus as your Lord and Savior you've been united with Christ in baptism and it says you have put on Christ it's like putting on a suit it's like getting dressed. You've gotten dressed with a new suit. It's a clean suit. It's Christ. Like putting on new clothes. And there's no longer Jew nor Gentile. Because that, that was the race battle that they were having back then. It wasn't white or black. Back then it was Jew or Gentile. And here it's saying it's no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free. And this is another big battle that they had there. Male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Can we say all that together at the end? For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Can we say that again? We are all one in Christ Jesus. All one in Christ Jesus. You know that when the Pentecostal movement was birthed, in the 19, early 1900s, it was birthed in the house of a former slave called Seymour. Black former slave. And he invited people just to gather and worship God. And the Holy Spirit fell on this place in the street of Azusa in California. And I was reading on this revival and something that Seymour said, listen to how powerful it is. He said, black and white and many other ethnic groups came together to the house and it was said that the color line was washed away in the bloodline of Jesus Christ. Woo. Right there where you're at, I really believe God is calling us to action, prophetic action, righteousness and justice. And those that are from the dream team that are here today, I'm going to ask you guys to do something. Can we get down on our knees? And I'm going to ask us that are up here, we're going to come together. And I want us to get down on our knees, but we're going to hold hands. And you're there in your house, and you're in your living room, your bedroom. You're in your office, wherever you may be. And if you could get down on your knees this moment, I really believe the Holy Spirit is speaking to us today. I really feel cut to my heart by His presence. We're going to hold hands up here, guys, if you guys don't mind. And if you guys could take... Victor, you got that mic? You're going to take 30 seconds and just pray as the Holy Spirit will lead you and they're going to pass it down to SP then to Shauna and then I'll close this moment in prayer. Go ahead. My God, thank you so much for the congregation to be able to come back again and praise your name, my God, and be able to have you uh, come into our hearts, my God. And I just thank you for the opportunity that you have opened for all of us to be able to speak on, 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 on these issues, my God. Be able to dissect our heart and be able to 
really bring you into our hearts and be able to really heal the wounds that have been inflicted by, by many, many, many different things, my God. And I just pray that you just guide us, my God, through these times of, of troubles, my, that, you, that you guide us, that, that you teach us, that you that you clarify a lot of the misunderstandings, my God. And I just pray that you just give us the power, give us the, give us, give us the opportunity, my God, to really go out and be able to preach your word, my God, to be able to bring love to this city, to this country, to this nation, my God. I just thank you, my God, for, for your goodness and for everything that you've done, my God. Father, this morning, um, I repent and I call my brothers and sisters to repent for the sin of our hearts, for pride, for thinking that we may be better than others because of the color of our skin or where we were born or how much money we have or what language we speak. We repent, Father God. You have called us as the body of Christ to go out into the ends of the world to teach others about who you are, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we cannot do that unless we can embrace and love people the beauty that they are as they are reflected in uh, many different colors and shades and accents and languages if we don't embrace and love people as you love people. So I repent, Father God, for my sin of complacency and silence and not thinking it's my issue. I ask that you would forgive me, Father, and that we would search our hearts and find any way that is offensive to you and that we would lay it all up and that we would choose to turn and turn our ways and to bridge and to come together with our brothers and sisters who are in pain. I pray for this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So God, we come before you. We cry out to you, God. We cry out for you to heal our land search our hearts, God. I pray, God, that whatever is happening in, around the world, that we don't ignore, we don't dismiss it, and we don't only just pray about it, God, but we take action as your church, as the capital C church, God, that we come together and we rise up. In your word, it says that faith without works is dead. So I'm asking right now, God, that you reveal to us, you show us, God, you show us what we can do as a church, united together. Pray for our hearts, God. Search our hearts. Search our hearts, God. Let us know what is not of you within our hearts so we can repent and we can do better because we know better. God, let us spread your love. Let us spread your love and let us educate ourselves so we can help our neighbors. God, I thank you for the movement that is happening because this is a movement. And I just pray that we don't let it pass us by. But we see it and we take action. Daddy God, we thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, because you are making us uncomfortable, Lord. You're making us uncomfortable, Lord. And maybe even the posture that we have right now is an uncomfortable one. But sometimes things need to get uncomfortable so that something could be done about it, Lord. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, because I really believe that you're moving upon this nation and you're using, Father God, this issue and this whole situation that happened with George Floyd last week to open the door to deal with the hurt and the pain and the wounds, Father God, that have gone on, Father God, in this nation since it was established, Lord God, and even before it was established, Lord, since the moment that the settlers started coming to this land. And Father, I declare that you use the church of the 21st century to bring healing, Father God. Today we speak in this place, Father God, 
Father, in this house, in this platform, in this place that you've declared that it's an open door. And we speak into the heavens, Lord God. And we declare you bring healing to our land and you bring revival to your land, Father God. And I declare that you break down all the barriers of white and black, Father God. Any barrier that exists, Father, that does not come from you. It breaks right now in Jesus' name. And I declare, Father God, that where there were walls, there's bridges now, Lord God. And we work together to usher in the greatest age and the greatest movement of the history of the church. We ask you for forgiveness, Lord. We ask you for forgiveness. If we've been blind, we ask you for forgiveness. If we've been quiet, if we look the other way, we ask you for forgiveness. But we won't be silent anymore, Lord. We will speak up for what's important in your heart. And right there where you're at, in your home, I really believe the Holy Spirit is moving. And I really believe He wants to do something in your heart today you're watching today and you feel something that is going on in there I really believe that's God that he's knocking in the door of your heart and if you've never invited Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior I want to give you that opportunity right now see we all need forgiveness of sins we all need to come to the place where we ask God Almighty for forgiveness for all the things we've done because no one is perfect we've all sinned and fallen short of his glory so right there where you're at, I want you to bow your heads and say this prayer out loud. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner in need of your forgiveness. Please forgive me, Lord. Today, I invite you into my heart. And I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. And deal with all the areas of my heart that need to be dealt with. If there's hate, if there's anger, bitterness, prejudice, work in me, Lord, through your Holy Spirit. Thank you. Because now I declare that I am a son or daughter of God. In your mighty name I pray. Amen.